what's the difference between HTML elements versus attributes? Well, here you'll get a clear definition of HTML elements and HTML attributes. And stick with me all the way along because I have plenty of examples for you. And of course, the next steps that you can take. How's it going? I'm Jeff from 10tononline.com. I teach small business owners how to build and grow their websites themselves. Now, be sure to head over to 10tononline.com forward slash free. There, I've got a free business web design workshop for you. Go and grab it while it is still available. All right, are you ready to get going with HTML elements versus attributes? All right, my friend, let's get going. Let's start things off with HTML elements. What is an HTML element? And furthermore, what are they used for? Very simply, an HTML element is an object that sits on a web page. That's really it. That's all there is to it. What kinds of objects can sit on a web page? Well, things like paragraphs, images, headings and subheadings, navigation menus, maybe bulleted lists, numbered lists, maybe a footer, whatever you got, really anything that sits on a web page is an HTML element. And it's important to know that nearly all HTML elements are comprised of both an opening tag and a closing tag. So for example, a paragraph might look like this. Notice that the paragraph elements opening tag starts with an open angle bracket followed by the element itself, in this case, P for paragraph. And that's followed by a closing angle bracket. Then we have the contents of the paragraph element, the content that will actually appear on the page inside your visitor's web browser, in this case, the opening lines of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And then following that content, the paragraph element closes with the closing paragraph tag, open angle bracket, forward slash P, close angle bracket, just like that. So many HTML elements open, they contain some content, and then they close. That's just how it works. However, not all HTML elements work like this. Some only have opening tags. It's a little weird, a little funky. A great example of this is an image. This is what an image looks like. That's it. It's just an opening IMG tag. That's all you need to specify an image. But what about things like the image itself, the actual picture, the actual graphic that you want to load in? And what about things like the image's width and height and maybe its positioning on the page and so on? Well, we'll talk about this in just a moment when we get into HTML attributes. But before we get to that, do me a quick favor. If you're enjoying all this great stuff so far and it's really helping you get some clarity, let me know in the comments down below if you can or... Better yet, say thanks by hitting one of the share buttons below. That would be great. All right, now let's take a look at HTML attributes. What are HTML attributes? Well, an HTML attribute is very simply a further definition of an HTML element. That's it. So said another way, attributes allow you to add additional properties to HTML elements. So for example, just a moment ago, we talked about using the image element to insert, of course, images. But maybe you want to specify dimensions, as we mentioned just a moment ago, to that image, and maybe some positioning values and perhaps some other settings as well. This can all be done with HTML attributes to further define, of course, the image element. Now, before we get to some examples, there's a few things that you need to know about HTML attributes. In fact, there's five things that you need to know about HTML attributes. Here we go. Number one, attributes must always appear inside an HTML elements opening tag. Always. That's how it works. Number two, normally attributes are comprised of two things, a property and a value, and it's structured as I've specified here. So it's going to have a property, an equal sign, and then in quotes, some kind of a value. So it could be width equals, and then in quotes, some kind of a dimension or 
numerical value or it could be something else, right? Whatever that attribute might be, but the structure is always the same. Property equals, and then in quotes, some kind of value. All right, thing you need to know, number three, each HTML element has specific attributes that you can use with them. So for instance, maybe we have a heading element of some sort or a title element or a paragraph element or a footer element. Each element has specific attributes that you can use with that particular HTML element. I hope that makes sense. Number four, you can use as many attributes that of course go with each HTML element as you'd like. So for instance, if a particular HTML element has five attributes, you can use all five if you want, or you could use one, or you could use three, or you could use none. It all depends on whatever it is you're trying to pull off. All right, here's the last thing, the fifth thing that you need to know about HTML attributes, the order that you put attributes in in that opening tag, that opening element tag, doesn't matter, but each has to be separated by a single space, all right? Okay, now, how about some examples of HTML attributes? We could take our paragraph from earlier on and we could further define it, maybe something like this. So here, we're further defining our paragraph by changing its alignment to center. So now the paragraph is going to be center aligned. Notice that the attribute appears in the opening paragraph tag. It specifies the property, in this case, align. And in quotes, there's some kind of a value. Here we have a center alignment being specified. Now, please note too that what I'm showing you here is just an example. In fact, this alignment method that I'm using as my example for demonstration purposes here is actually outdated. These days we would use cascading style sheets to change a paragraph's alignment, but that starts getting beyond the scope of what we're talking about here today. So again, this is just an example. It's just for education and demonstration purposes to give you an example of what an HTML attribute looks like and how it would be structured. Here's another example of an HTML attribute. Remember our image from earlier on? First, let's specify the graphic file that we'd like to load into our web page. We'll do that with the SRC attribute like this. And of course, because the image element only has an opening tag, the source attribute or the SRC attribute simply goes inside that tag, that element. Note too that the value specified in quotes for SRC is the path to the image that will be loaded onto your web page. Now, what if we wanted to set some dimensions for the image? We can do that by adding more attributes to the image element. So maybe as a quick down and dirty example here for you, we want to set a width on this image of 600. That would be 600 pixels, by the way, and a height of 200, 200 pixels. As with our paragraph alignment example from just a moment ago, there are much better ways to set dimensions for your images. So this is just for educational and demonstration purposes here. Again, treat this as just a simple example. But note that all of the attributes follow the same structure of property equals and then in quotes some kind of value. And notice that the order that the attributes have been placed in doesn't matter so long as they're separated by a single space. Now, if you're ready to take the next steps, head over to 10tononline.com forward slash free and grab that free workshop that I mentioned earlier on. I will see you there.